Hello friends, a very warm welcome to Coding Techniques again. Today I am shooting this video on the event of Navratri. So happy Navratri to you all too. Now moving ahead with our today's video, I am going to show you how to work with the swipe button. So let's get started. If you haven't checked my courses and the templates, do check it out. Links are there in the description. All the links are available there. Go and check that right now. Now as you can see here, I have removed all the code and I have created a new project here in which I have given the title of swipe button and within our iron content well actually I'm just going to show you the button only so I'm going to have an iron row here to which let me give some margin you won't be able to see anything in this particular one in the content one right now because we need to provide some data here then only it's going to work so I will have an iron column now within this iron column I'm going to pass a div in which I will have some text. Let's say swipe. Okay. And you can see this swipe is coming up. Now I need to change the color of the background of the iron column. And for doing that up, let's do it dynamically because if we need to do it from the SCSS, I can directly pass iron column and background color here in this particular way. Background color to be, let's say, okay, spelling is background color to be where dash dash iron color let's say primary okay now you will see that the color will show up right now i need to do it dynamically so what am i going to do instead of passing it in this particular place let me just copy it remove everything go to html and in this particular one to this column i am going to use style dot background dash color or directly you can pass in this particular way also okay both of them will work equals to the variable i'm going to use in this particular way iron color and instead of primary you can give any color you want so i'll just do it in this particular way here all right so here you can add your color let's see color and i'm going to pass it in the ts file so in the ts file before the constructor let me pass color let's say to be primary okay let's check it out in the html the error is gone and you can see the same primary color which is coming up that's great now if i change this to dash c still it's going to show up the stuff right so uh, both of them are working you can choose whichever you want now this is done we have the background color here now what next needs to be done now i need to pass some styling to my iron column and for doing that let me go to the scss file in the SCSS file, in the iron column, what am I going to do? Well, I will pass a border radius of 50 pixels because I want it to be round shape, the column one. And the display, I have given it as flex because I want to align all the items to the center horizontally and vertically. So right now, align items center, which means in the Y direction, it will be centered up. That's what I need for the time being because this div, I'm going to have a position of absolute for that. That is what I'm going to do right now. So within the iron column, I will have my div here to which, what am I going to do? I'll pass the position to be absolute and we can also translate it into Y direction to center it up. I'm just shifting it into X direction and by 15 VH, I'm just doing it. I think 17 VH will be fine. Well, you can make this one also to be dynamic if you want to, okay? So once this is done, what is the next thing that we need to apply or work with? Well, let me just show you. Let me make this dynamic at first. So I'll go to the HTML again and to our div, I'll just pass style.transform and there I'm going to pass the width in VH. So in the TS file, I'll pass a width also, which will be equals to 17. All right. Now it will be still centered up properly. So according to the sizes, you can still vary. Or there is another way of doing it. Well, let me pass a width to this particular one. So I'll pass a width of 100%. And then to the HTML, instead of passing this up, I will just align everything to the center of the div. So now it is working, right? Let me just remove this from the TS file also. So now it is working. Everything is centered up. Now you must be thinking like the iron column height is not proper. Well, once we pass the design, for our iron fab button, that is what we are going to use it right now. It will be fine. It will take the size of the iron fab button. But if you want to fix the size, definitely you can do it here. Say like if I give a height of like 10 VH, it's going to take that in this particular way, right? 
So that's what you can do. I'll remove it and work with the HTML now. Also within the div, let me wrap this particular swipe into the ion text. All right, where I'm going to pass a color of light color, which is by default. And within this, let me pass a text to be dynamic one because I'm going to play around with that particular text. So let me remove it. And in the TS file, I'll just pass here text that's going to be equals to swipe. All right, that's what I'm going to do. And then in the HTML, after this div, I'm going to have a fab button, which will be in this particular way. So once you just look at it, I've just given a fab button to which I've given an identifier of swipe button and a color of light color. Within that, I have given three icons. One is at the having a class of left, which I'm going to place it at the left side. Then the last one will be on the right side and it's going to be at the bottom. But these classes are not defined yet. All right. So I'm going to work around with that particular classes in order to make it work and the all the icons will be squeezed and will look nice. So now let's work on that in our SCSS here. In the SCSS, what am I going to do? I'm going to work around with the iron fab button within which I'll pass position to be relative and the transformation will be quite easy. Okay, that's why I've given 0 0.3 seconds transition time and it will be transiting towards the X direction at zero position means I'm not going to translate because by default it might take some things most probably not if it is not taking if it is not shifted that's perfectly okay otherwise you can simply pass translate x to zero value now next is the iron icon with which i'm going to play around by using the position to be absolute here this is very important because we have three icons and i'm going to use the position to be absolute in order to show it in a proper way now you can see just one icon right now because two icons are hiding behind it because they are at the same position right now. So I'm going to play around with this particular one now. And in order to work with that, I'm going to use the class left and right one. In the left one, I'll pass left to be zero and transform in X direction by three pixels only because it will be aligned properly. Similarly, in the right one, right to be zero and transforming in the X direction by minus three pixels. All right, that's the only thing I've done and it will show you the result in this particular way which is looking lovely it is giving you a sense of swipe button being used all right that is why i've done in that particular way now we have our fab button ready the design is ready right but still if i just try to swipe it it won't move and in order to work with that in order to move it we need something else and for that the typescript file will come into play so at first I need to work with the identifier which we have given to our iron fab button that is going to be swipe button one. And I need to like import all this because I'm going to use the view child in order to get a reference to the particular element. And this is how we are going to do that. All right. And I've given a not symbol here just to say that this value is not null. It will have some value. Now I need three more variables here that I'm going to use will be this particular one. One is to check whether swipe is in progress or not. Okay, if you want to do something with that, then you can just check it out. The second one is the call width, the column width that I'm going to check. Means if it is touching the column end part, then that means the swipe is being done. All right, we have perfectly swiped it. Otherwise, we haven't swiped. And how much transition towards the X direction is that also I'm going to track it. So we need to work with the certain events in order to like achieve this particular stuff and for doing so i'm going to use the host listener here when the touch is started then an event will be triggered this event will be triggered here and i can like log the event or i am just passing swipe in progress to be true here okay just to make it check whether it is working properly or not and i have imported it from an angular slash core now the next listener which we are going to work with is on touch move. So whenever it is moving that particular element that is our iron fab button, whenever it is moving, we are going to trigger that event and we will check here if swipe in progress then only this particular stuff will work. In which what I'm doing, I'm just checking the value of delta x by, by getting the event value and touches zero dot client. That is how you can get the value of that particular uh, like the e element okay how much it is getting uh, moved and you can just check the delta value here then similarly what i've had done is i have taken the value of the 
particular column width okay by using this particular one this dot swipe button dot native element dot parent element so parent element is the ion column here okay dot client width so that is what i am taking and within this only i am getting the value of the call width that is the column width okay so you have understood how to get the column width here so this will like log me the column width which we can simply check okay and finally we have the translate in x direction where I am going to check the minimum value between the two. So whichever is the minimum one, we'll take that and that will have the value of translate X value. Okay. And finally, I am going to like have the value here to this particular native element. That means I'm just passing this particular fab button in value, how much to translate in Y X direction. And this will be checked by this particular one. So as I'm moving it up, that much value will be passed there okay say like let me just try it if i just try to move it see it is moving all right and if i leave it there it's going to be there okay and if you want to check the value of the event that is getting triggered just check the value of it so translate x is 175 call width is 358 is the call width okay and what is the delta x here delta x is 175.152 that is the value that is coming up and you can check the value of call width. Call width is 358. So we don't want the call width, right? Every time we want the minimum value that is the delta x1. If it is equal to the call width, then only we are going to trigger something. And that's what we are going to do it in the next listener. Let me minimize it. So this listener, I have hope you have understood how we have done that. And the styling is being applied. Now final listener will be on touch end. So this is our listener, the final one in which I'm logging the event and I'm checking if translate X value that we have triggered here, if it is equals to equals to the call width. That is why I'm using these two variables here. If these two are equal, then I'm just going to change my text and the color of the background of the ion column here. And it will pass a delay of 800 milliseconds or you can go for one second also. All right, that's what I've done using this particular function here and I'm passing async await also. All right, so it won't pass this particular function until and unless this particular duration is over. Okay, that is why I've done that because I want to change the text and the color once again after that is done. So just the transition that I am giving in order to make you understand properly that actually the swipe is being successfully done. And finally, after this condition is over or even this condition is not satisfied, still I will have progress in swipe in progress to be turned to false and I'll transform again to the X direction of zero value, the particular iron pepper. So this is what is being done here. It's time to try it. So I'll just open this particular one, go to the console and move it here. Now let's try it up. So I'll just try to swipe a little bit and stop it. So it is coming back to the original position because the value is 109. It is not equals to 358. What happens if I just move it towards the end? Let's check it out. So I'll just move it towards the end now. And you see it swiped and again it is coming back after 800 milliseconds. What if I do it quickly? Just check it out. Again it is working. If I do swipe it quickly, it's working. How quickly it is working, right? So this is how it is being done. I hope you have understood how to work with this swipe button here. So with this, I'm going to wrap up for the day. I hope you like this particular video. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel if you're new here. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'm going to see you next time.